Welcome back to chapter 22 in module 5. We're going to finish up this chapter by talking about what happens once stars leave the main sequence. Chapters 23 and 24 talks about the true deaths of stars and what events and things are left behind. Uh, but we want to make sure we understand what it looks like when stars leave the main sequence and what happens to them. So as we talk about the ev evolution stages of all these different stars, we need to remind ourselves that the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram isn't just a kind of static image of star properties, but it shows us snapshots of where stars actually go when they leave the main sequence. I like this kind of cartoon-like Hertzsprung-Russell diagram because the distinction between stars along the main sequence being alive and well and spending 90% of their lives just turning hydrogen into helium and glowing steadily, compared with the older giants and supergiants, old because the only objects that go into that upper right part of the diagram are objects that were on the main sequence and then have left the main sequence. That's our goal for today. And in the bottom left, we get a small preview of what we're going to be talking about in chapter 23, which is that white dwarfs, this object that we've mentioned once or twice already in the previous module, is not actually a star at all, but is the remains, a stellar remnant of what used to be a star. Okay. Now, we mentioned briefly that stars in the previous video, that stars leave the main sequence when they run out of hydrogen to turn into helium in their core. It is still extremely important for us to remember that most of the star is still made of hydrogen. In this set of images here, that light yellow color in both part A and part B is still the stellar envelope that is 75% hydrogen, and that will never be part of the fusion process. But when a star first forms, it has a denser, hotter core that is turning hydrogen into helium. And so over time, helium builds up in that core, and at some point we run out of hydrogen to be able to do anything with. Now without nuclear fusion, then, we run out of our nice balance between gravity pulling inwards and pressure pushing out. This balance actually breaks down in two different ways. The core itself has this strong force of gravity with nothing to fight against it, and the core contracts. However, the outer layers don't recognize that the core has a problem with this fusion because all they're seeing is a much hotter core than there was before. Anytime you contract something um, that is gaseous, um, you heat it up. And so as the core contracts, it gets a lot hotter, which means that in the outer layers, the hydrostatic equilibrium we talked about is actually offset and out of balance, but the opposite direction. The pressure is a lot bigger than gravity in those outer layers. And so the overall star, the outer layer expands. And so when we see a star leave the main sequence, we see it go into the, um, the upper right portion of the diagram we see that star expand into a giant or a supergiant, even though the core is the thing contracting. It may be worth drawing it out and making a note to yourself for the core, which is winning, gravity or pressure. For the outer layers, which is winning, gravity or pressure, when the main sequence uh, phase is over. Now, as the core gets hotter and hotter, that means that it is starting to get into the... Um, situation required, the density and temperature required, to turn helium into something else. That process is called the triple alpha process because helium nuclei are sometimes called alpha particles, and we need three of them. If we look at this image, there's two initially to create beryllium briefly, but a third one is then used to create carbon. Three helium get turned into one carbon-12 nucleus, and energy comes out in the form of gamma rays. There's not as much energy here, and so this process won't be able to last the star as long as the hydrogen phase did, but it is a stage of fusion available to almost all stars. 
from the highest masses down to um, close to the lowest masses. Now, what that means then is that the star leaves the main sequence to become a red giant until the point where the core has a fusion process going on again. Because if there is fusion in the core, then we can go back into this balance, this hydrostatic equilibrium, and the core and the star turns around and basically tries to reset itself back towards the main sequence. So at location B here, that's when the core contracts to turn on helium fusion, and the star contracts again because now it's back into balance. However, that doesn't last very long. And so at location C here, the core runs out of helium fusion again, and so fusion shuts down. Now the core is mostly carbon. So with low mass stars like the sun, on the left, that's all that's gonna happen. We'll talk about what is created after that point, but low mass stars like the sun go through the proton-proton chain, then they can go through the triple, triple alpha process and make a carbon core, but then they're done. High mass stars, however, can go through a whole bunch more stages. On the far right of the picture here, um, we have a kind of diagram of what the inner part of a high mass star, something more than eight or 10 times the mass of the sun, what that would look like. But even that has a limit. Iron is the end stage of fusion, the end product of fusion for high mass stars. And this is extremely important. Nuclear reactions can produce energy, but not always. It will always be called fusion if we go from a small mass number to a big mass number. And it will always be called fission if we go from a big mass number down to a small mass number. But we will only get energy out of the process. We will only create energy if we are moving up this binding energy curve. Now, iron has a mass number of around 56. It's marked with a green dashed line here. Since stars are using fusion to power themselves, they can go through different stages. We're not even going to list them all. But once they get to iron, they have created something that although it is possible to fuse iron into something bigger, it requires that you put energy into that process instead of receiving energy out of that process, which means stars can't power themselves by trying to fuse iron into something else. That's a big problem for stars. So in chapter 23, we will talk about what happens once stars reach their end state, whether that's just a low mass star that has created carbon in its core, or whether that's a high mass star that went all the way up until iron and then bad things happen when it needs to power itself and is unable to. But that's what we're gonna be talking about in chapter 23 and 24, so stay tuned.